The Philippines is a beautiful country in Southeast Asia, made up of many islands. Its capital is Manila. People in the Philippines are friendly and diverse, with a mix of different cultures and languages. The country has stunning landscapes including beaches, mountains, and tropical forests. Filipino cuisine is delicious, known for its unique flavors. The Philippines has a rich history, influenced by both Asian and Western cultures. It's a popular destination for tourists who want to explore its vibrant culture and natural wonders. In this video, I'm going to talk about 12 biggest only in the Philippine moments. Number one, security guards are everywhere. Security guards are all over the Philippines, not just at big places like malls and banks, but even in small stores. If you're new here, you might find it surprising and it could seem strange at first. I've been living here for three months now and I still don't get why there are so many security guards. I haven't seen any bombings in Manila or nearby provinces. So I still don't understand why there is such a strong presence of security guards everywhere. Number two, security guards do have guns. Here it's common for security guards to always carry at least one gun, whether it's a small or a large one. If they are security guards, having a gun is a standard. The Philippines is generally safe. However, it's difficult to understand why security guards carry guns. Number three, traffic jams almost every day, every hour. In 2023, Metro Manila's average travel time per 10 kilometers was 25 minutes and 30 seconds versus 24 minutes and 50 seconds in 2022. The percentage of congestion in the bustling Philippine capital was seen at 52% last year. Metro Manila or the National Capital Region with 16 cities and one municipality is home to nearly 14 million inhabitants and ranks among the world's most densely populated places. Manila residents and visitors spend 240 hours on the road in the past year, enduring 117 hours in slow moving rush hour traffic at just 19 kilometers per hour. Manila's worst travel day in 2023 was December 15, with an average 31 minutes and 50 seconds to cover 10 kilometers. Number four, churches everywhere. In the Philippines, you can find churches everywhere adding beauty and importance to surroundings. These special places are not only in big cities, but also in small towns and faraway villages, becoming a natural part of a Filipino life. The design of Philippine churches is a mix of local and foreign influences. 
they often have pretty details like fancy fronts, detailed carvings, and colorful stained glass windows. Builders use materials from the area like coral stone and hardwood, making each church special and blending culture with faith. These churches are not just for praying, they bring communities together. People gather not only for worship, but also for events and socializing. Many of these churches are like living history books, witnessing centuries of Philippine stories. The calm feelings inside, filled with prayers and songs, make them special places for both locals and tourists. Around the churches, there is usually a lively atmosphere. Vendors set up stalls, selling religious items, candles, and local snacks. This adds to the experience, making it more than just a spiritual visit. Philippine churches are not only about religion, they're like museums of art and history. Inside, you can find old religious objects, paintings, and statues telling stories of faith and strength. Many tourists, including myself, come not only for the religious side, but also to admire the rich mix of culture found in these places. So, in simple terms, churches in the Philippines are not just for praying, they are important to culture, history, and social life of the country. Whether in busy cities or quiet villages, they show how faith and community are always valued by the Filipino people. Number five, extreme carpooling. In the Philippines, something unique happens. You can see up to 10 people squeezing into one tricycle. This extreme carpooling is a special experience you won't find anywhere else in the world. Tricycles in the Philippines are like motorbike taxis. They have a motorcycle and attached to it is a small cab for passengers. Besides jeepneys, tricycles are one of the most usual ways to get around, whether it's for public transport or their private travels, particularly in the countryside. Number six, Bayanihan. The Bayanihan is a Filipino custom derived from a Filipino word bayan, which means nation, town, or community. The term Bayanihan itself literally means being in a bayan, which refers to the spirit of communal unity, work, and cooperation to achieve a specific goal. The idea of Bayanihan comes from an old tradition in the Philippines, especially in rural areas. When a family is moving to a new place, the folks in the town, mainly the men, are asked to help. It's not just about carrying the family's stuff, but also most crucial part is moving the whole house to the new spot. A traditional Filipino house called a Bahay Kubo is built using a local materials like bamboo and nipa leaves. The Bayanihan spirit reflects how Filipinos believe in helping each other, especially during tough times, without expecting anything in return. Filipinos have a strong belief in assisting their fellow countrymen in any way they can. It's a lovely Filipino mindset of supporting one another. This spirit is still very much alive, especially in rural areas, where people come together to move houses. Moreover, the Bayanihan spirit continues in modern times. Seen when disasters happen, Filipinos actively help their fellow countrymen facing difficulties. Number seven, Tahoe. It's a combination of soy, sweetener, and sago, usually eaten during breakfast too. You would see the Tahoe seller carrying two aluminum buckets over his shoulder. Number eight, too many holidays. In the Philippines, there are 18 fixed national holidays each year, with four considered as special non-working days. This count can increase due to special declarations. Additionally, there are about 184 local holidays, either declared by the President or Congress. Among these, one is a regional holiday, 41 are for provinces, and 142 are specific to certain cities or towns. In comparison, the average for ASEAN countries is 15 holidays. The Philippines has more holidays than its ASEAN counterparts, like Vietnam with 10, Singapore with 11, 
Thailand and Malaysia with 15 each, and Indonesia with 17. Number 9. Banana Ketchup, also called banana sauce, is a Filipino condiment made from bananas, sugar, vinegar, and spices. Originally, it had a brownish yellow color, but to look more like tomato sauce or tomato ketchup, it's often colored red. This ketchup was created in the Philippines during World War II when there weren't enough tomatoes, but there was plenty of bananas. Number 10. Eating Boodle Fight Style Kamayan or Boodle Fight is the traditional Filipino method of eating with bare hands. It is also used to describe the Filipino communal feast, where food is served on banana leaves and eaten without utensils. It's the traditional pre-colonial method of eating in Filipino culture. This is done by forming a small mound of rice, adding a piece of the accompanying dish for flavor, compressing it into a small pyramid with the fingers, lifting it to the mouth nestled in four cup fingers and then pushing it into the mouth with the thumb. The entire process only uses the fingers of one hand. It never uses the palms of the hands. And the fingers also never enter the mouth. The other hand is not used and may instead be used to hold a plate or a drink. Number 11. Selfies. The Philippines earned the title selfie capital of the world back in 2014 by time magazine makati city was named as the selfie capital with pasig running a close second cebu city ranked number nine and it should come as a little surprise not because filipinos are more vain or narcissistic than other people but because filipinos tend to fully adopt any new technology which improves communication and connecting with each other in fact, back in 2001, the Philippines also earned the title Tax Capital of the World. Even today, approximately 400 million messages are sent by Filipinos every day, 142 billion a year. What makes the Filipinos take to social media so easily? The strongest underlying reason to why social ties have greater importance in the Philippines than they do elsewhere has to do with the country's economic instability. In a country known for political instability and internal corruption, Filipinos come to rely on each other rather than their government for support. The Filipino support system, which includes extended family and the barcada or a group of friends usually made up of people you've met at school or work, takes the place of the government and acts as insurance a safety net, a money lender, and emergency assistance. The ties that keep these groups closely knit are the glue that hauls Filipino society together. It's no surprise then that any tools that strengthen social ties enable groups to keep tabs on each other, call for help, and interact quickly take special importance in the Filipino context. Number 12. Beauty Pageants the Philippines, known for stunning islands in Southeast Asia, holds the record for having the most beauty pageant winners in Asia. Beauty pageants have become a significant part of daily life for Filipinos at all levels of society. One reason for the widespread interest in beauty pageants is the hope for a way out of poverty. For many Filipino women, joining beauty pageants is seen as an opportunity to improve their lives. Winning can lead to prizes, scholarships, endorsement deals, and chances in the entertainment industry. It's views as a potential pathway to change their fortunes. Beyond just looks, these pageants also promote the country's culture and raise awareness about global issues. The Filipino fascination with beauty pageants is deeply rooted in their culture, making it challenging to escape its impact on women's empowerment. In the Philippines, beauty is closely connected to the idealized image of women more than in Western cultures. Additionally, the beauty pageant industry in the Philippines is a big business worth billions of pesos. However, not everyone sees this obsession positively. Some argue that beauty pageants promote unrealistic beauty standards and are merely an excuse to objectify women. Critics believe that it fosters unrealistic stereotypes and preferences, 
leading many countries outside the Philippines to strongly oppose beauty pageants. So what's your only in the Philippines moment?